Welcome to the DEF CON 30 Homecoming 101 track. So it's, it's been like a very emotional year. How many people at the beginning of the year weren't sure if we were even going to be here? A show of hands. Right? It's really questionable. And uh, month after month and the, the stress. And so being here and seeing my people is really awesome. So you're awesome. Just thought I'd say that. So for those of you who have not really been to a DEF CON or maybe only a DEF CON virtual and now this is your first first timers, raise your hand. No shame. Holy wow. shit. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. Oh well, I mean it makes sense you'd all be in this room at this time, so so that works. Okay, so um, you won't get too many of the older uh, references, but that's fine. Um, I'll just kind of talk for about 10 or 15 minutes and then we're going to pass it off to Melanie uh, who runs our communications and press and is sort of the conscious consciousness of the, of the con. Don't put that on me. I don't put that on me. <laughs> I, I lean on, on Mel for a lot of advice. And, uh, and then we're going to have this great panel with uh, some new and long time uh, DEF CON goons and attendees and, uh, and then we're going to go to the audience and ask some questions and you answer your questions. So before we do that, um, there's a couple of cliche phrases around DEF CON I just want to address. One is DEF CON is what you make of it. And this came about when a lot of people were complaining, hey, I didn't get this one specific experience that I wanted or I didn't meet this one person that I knew I was supposed to meet if I came. Um, or I didn't get to hack the car or whatever. And other people would say, no, well, I, I got to do that. Why didn't you get to do that? And it quickly turned into there's a million ways to experience this conference. And unlike some other more corporate conferences, we don't have these pathways totally defined for you. It's not like you get on the track one, shake the hand with the executive and get the sales briefing. It's really up to you. And it can be very chaotic at some times, which causes some stress but it's also super rewarding because it's like a choose your own adventure. We're in like this unlimited massive multiplayer universe here. And everybody has had to go through what you're going to go through this year <laughs> trying to figure it out. And some people focus on the talks. Some people f sit down with their laptop. Some people sit in lock picking village for half a day and walk away with a new skill. And so don't feel that you missed out because it's impossible. Around DEF CON I think three, I started hearing stories of stuff that were happening at the con that I was throwing that I didn't know was happening. And then I realized this is bigger than me and I have to be okay with not knowing everything that's going on. And that's kind of like, like if you have children, that's kind of like letting go. Like, please tell me the stories, you know, please send me the pictures of her first steps or whatever because I'm not there. I, did, I missed it. But I'm still there. And that's what you're going to hear at DEF CON a lot. Oh my God, did you see the cabanas flying through the air last night when the storm hit? Did you see the water raining in on the roof last night? And I guess what I'm getting at is I want you to go make your own path and I want you to not feel bad if you didn't see everything. So that's sort of the, it is what you make of it. If you're very introverted, maybe take an attempt to maybe extrovert. But if you can't, that's okay because probably a third of DEF CON is super introverted. And when we built the con unintentionally, I'll take credit for it, but really it's an unintentional action, is um, we grew by word of mouth. We don't have a marketing budget. And so every year based on people's experiences they'd tell their friends and it grew very organically. And so there's no attempt to like target a market audience and get that market audience to attend. It is what it is through just organic word of mouth. And I think that's one of our greatest strengths um, because the people are here generally want to be here. We didn't mind trick them with some Facebook targeted ads <laughs> or something. Um, and because of that, people are pretty passionate um, about what they're into or what they want to try to get out of it. Um, so that's just kind of how we got there, how we got here. Um, 
We in the early days and, and even today we never uh, I, I come from the bulletin board days and, uh, and Usenet days after that and you never knew the gender of the person you were talking to. You didn't know their age. You didn't know where they were from. You didn't know anything about them except what you saw in their messages at 300 baud, at 1200 baud, 2400 baud, right? And so we would make your decisions on if the person was an idiot or not based on what they said. And that just carried forward. We don't give a shit what you look like or what you sound like or anything. We are interested in what's in your brain, right? You should be judged here on your ideas and your compassion and how you interact with other people and not what kind of shoes you're wearing, right? And so that might be important elsewhere, but here um, you'll see these people in suits talking with these, you know, teenagers with green hair and they're having a great time and it's really kind of a surreal experience and it's awesome. Um, so please try to just suspend your eyes and focus on your, on your experience when you talk to people. Um, we have had, uh, you'll hear some things about spot the Fed contest. Um, we have had a rocky history a little bit with, uh, with the Feds, but it's always been tongue in cheek. And um, I'll tell you a brief story about uh, how that got started. Um, <clears throat> we were organizing, DEF CON was the first not invite only hacking conference 30 years ago. And before you had to know someone to get in, to get the invite, to get on the list, to show up the hacking thing. And I didn't like that because I didn't get invites to some of them. It's like, well, fuck that. I'm making my own show. But when we made our own show, I was like, well, I don't want that experience to happen to other people. So we invited everybody. And it wasn't just hackers or phone freakers. We invited artists and musicians and lawyers. And basically in those days, there was this whole renaissance sort of like pre-wired the internet could be anything, it could be art, it could be, you know, this utopia. And so everybody was invited and everybody was trying to figure it out. And so I had this really eclectic early mix. And um, actually a friend I made at the very first DEF CON was a lawyer uh, for Capitol Records. And that summer I was working as an intern at Capitol Records in Hollywood because of this connection I made. And so it was a really nice um, blending. Well, uh, I knew the feds were going to be there. Um, law enforcement and movies were kind of promoting this image of the hacker as this mythical person that could fly and walk through walls and hack computers. And I send a fax to the FBI field office here and, uh, and I say, hey, I'm Jeff Moss. Uh, we're doing this hacking conference. You're invited. And it like just kind of goes into this black hole. And I sent them to the Secret Service and I, you know, I was trying to like blanket everything. So nobody's surprised at the last minute if they hear that there's a hacking conference in Vegas. Well, the show's getting closer and closer and I'm starting to get nervous and so I call the field office in Vegas and I say, hey, um, Jeff Moss, I'm doing this hacking conference. They say, okay, let me transfer you to the special agent in charge. And he answers the phone, special in charge, blah, 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 blah. And I go into my spiel, hey, we're doing this hacking conference, I'd love to have you there. We're gonna have all these hackers, we're gonna do this, but great. And there's this big long pregnant pause on the phone. Like I can feel his like eyes like lasering me through the phone. And he says, we are aware of your activities. <laughs> and I'm like, oh great, so you're coming. So that sound, that's good, right? And he, and he laughs because he knew he was messing with me and he's like, no, no, I, you know, we're enforcement and what you want is like policy. That's Washington DC. That's not a field office. You know, you should talk to them. Like, okay, no problem. First DEF CON comes and goes. Shenanigans happen. It's over. It's Sunday. We're cleaning up and um, a guy comes over to me and he like whoop, shows me his badge. He's like, hey, yeah, good show. I'm like, you said you were not coming. And he's like, well, you know, and I, and uh, it's like, okay, we can do this. We're looking for you next year, you know. And it turned into this sort of cat and mouse game. And in the early days, if they wore leather loafers, you knew they were feds. And then they got sneakers on. They got smarter. The fanny packs with the firearms disappeared, and they they got better and better. The long story short, though, is that created this kind of more accepting, interactive experience, and that spot the fed game unintentionally really paved the way, I think, for no animosity between us, right? Our communities kind of 
game recognizes game a little bit. And, um, and so all these unplanned experience have led us to this point, this crazy blending of different communities. Um, and so when people think that there is a master plan, no, no man, there's no master plan. The master plan is community and getting people together and giving them as many pathways to make connections as possible. When you have this many people, and you'll notice this and this is intentional, when you get this many people at a conference, it is impossible to not feel lost. So what do we do? We fork you off. Interested in aviation? You want to go in aviation? You want to go ICS part of aviation? You want to go? And next thing you know, you're sitting at a table with 10 other people with your interest and you're talking to them. And now you don't have to deal with a thousand people. You just made 10 friends. Right? You're in the lock picking, you're in the high security lock picking, you're in the thing. Now you've got 10 people around you. And so we're constantly thinking how do we split everybody off into smaller areas of interest and then let you decide where you want to go. Um, so it does feel big but it's also conferences inside the conference inside the conference. And we're constantly trying to figure out how to do that. And one of our famous strategies is I give you a lot of rope. If you want to run say the AI village and you say, I've got this idea for an AI village. It's like, okay, convince me. Okay, you get a space. Let's see if you fuck it up. And if you don't, you get more space. And you know, so when you go in there and you see a really large village, it's like they didn't screw it up for years. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and if you see a small village, a lot of times they're first timer or they're just starting and they're trying to figure it out. So your feedback to them could be really valuable because they're just trying to figure out how do they find their way in this community? And you'll see villages come and go. It didn't work out or the time was wrong or there's a lot of interest in blockchain and then the interest drops and we repurpose the space to try the next idea. Um, and so again, not a master plan really. We're just trying to get you all um, to talk and connect and carry on sort of that DEF CON spirit throughout the year because you'll find out that the friends and the relationships you make here, you'll carry throughout the rest of the year. And we do some virtual events, we have a discord, we have forums, but really man, no, nothing beats this in-person feeling. Um, so try to, get, try to get the most out of that. Um, one final thing is we, um, we, the one thing we don't do is we don't take sponsorships. Um, and that's a conscious decision. Um, there's probably a lot of money we've been leaving over on the table over the years, but um, when we started the conference, there were no sponsorships, like nobody was doing this. And so by the time money arrived in the hacking scene and sponsors arrived, we'd already built ourselves to be self-sufficient so we really didn't need it and we didn't want to be influenced by it. Um, and so if sometimes you look around you're like, man, they should just put an extra video wall there or they should do this extra thing. It's like, well, we could if we started taking sponsorships and generating a lot more revenue but we don't want to, you know. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty intentional decision because we like our freedom and we like the ability to tell vendors or, or people who might uh, try to intimidate us to not have a talk on an access control system or a voting system. We like not being able to be pressured um, through different vendors. So, so that's also uh, a little bit of the con history that you might not, might be in the back of your head but it, that is a conscious decision. Okay. So that's, uh, that's my sort of my opening orientation remarks. Um, all I do the whole con is I walk and I just orbit and orbit and that's all I do the whole time. And so if you see me, say hi. I'm happy to talk to you but if it looks like my hair's on fire and I'm racing somewhere, just get out of my way. <laughs> Please. Okay. So I'm going to hand it off. Where did Mel go? Oh, there you are. Okay. So I'm going to introduce you to Melanie who's going to introduce you to our panelists and we're going to go, they're going to uh, carry on the conversation and it's going to open up to the audience. So great. Thank you everyone. Thanks, Jeff. Um, a bit of course correction. Um, I go by Wednesday. Wednesday. Wi for strangers. So. <laughs> and you're all strangers. And you're all strangers. Um, all right. So thank you so much, everybody, uh, for for joining us today. I'm really excited about the folks that we've pulled together today. They all have very different and unique uh, experiences with DEF CON.
Uh, so I've asked them to share a little bit of their story and how they got involved in the community to help all of you as you acclimate and find your people and find your little groups within this very large group. Uh, I am the type that I, I am very introverted and I just pretend to be an extrovert for a living. So if you also feel that way, there are plenty of corners, plenty of wonderful people, um, and we wanna help you find uh, the folks that you really gel with. Um, if you are an extrovert, I don't understand where you come from, but there's also a place for you here. <laughs> So that being said, uh, a little bit of background about myself. As um, Jeff mentioned, I run the, the press department, the communication strategy here at DEF CON. I have been a goon for nine years. Um, so I have seen a lot of the changes that he talked about. Um, and I actually started by volunteering with what at the time was called DEF CON Kids. So we used to have a village dedicated to our youngest hackers. Um, it eventually evolved into something called Roots Asylum. Um, they have since retired as of this year, but hopefully we'll have something taking its place uh, for next year. So if that's something that's interesting to you, let me know because we are trying to pull something new together. But that's how I got started, was just volunteering with one of these villages. And over time, um, there was more needs and uh, more things that uh, the team needed help with and eventually um, I, I hope nobody actually holds me responsible for the consciousness of DEF CON, um, but it is part of my, uh, my professional training to help organizations be a little bit more empathetic and more inclusive. Um, so with that being said, I want to introduce our amazing uh, panelists uh, that we've brought together today. I'm going to ask each of you to Introduce yourselves. Uh, let us know what you want to be called. I, I know all of you by different names and I want to be respectful of what you want to be called by this group. So let us know what you want to be called. Um, let us know how you got introduced um, into DEF CON and give us one tip of a, a do or don't um, that you would share with a newcomer who's here for the first time. So, to, so let's start with you. <laughs> My name is Tanisha O'Donohue. Um, I prefer to be called T. Um, I got introduced into DEF CON through um, Black Girls Hack. We, this is our first year here. We have a village called Girls Hack Village. Um, so yeah. And do you have a, a tip for the newcomers on something that you would recommend they do or they don't do? Plan for the things that you can't plan. <laughs> Just keep thinking about all the what ifs and keep planning. <laughs> Hello, my name is Shannon Morse. I go by Snubs on the internet. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. And I got introduced to DEF CON back in, I want to say like 2009 through a YouTube podcast I do called Hack5, H A K5. Uh, you can Google it, it's really good. Definitely subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe, thanks. And um, I, I guess my main thing would be. Uh, Please, dear God, wear deodorant. <laughs> is this on? No. Applause out the gate. Hello, my name is Steven. I go by at Asifo says on social stuff there. Uh, I was introduced to DEF CON by some individuals on my team who had been before, and then we were having like a recruiting event. So I came and I was like, oh, this is cool. And one piece of advice that I would say or I guess to do is whatever remotely interests you, go check it out. Especially if it's your first time, there might be something that you weren't expecting that is like, hey, this is actually pretty cool. For me, it was like the social engineering community where they like were calling. You know, I was like, that's pretty cool. So. Uh, my name is Michael, uh, also known as Sparky. Uh, it's he, him. Um, I started at uh, DEF CON 8. Uh, DEF CON 10, I was brought into the knock, and 20 years later, I'm sitting on stage. Um, I guess the one tip I have is uh, look to your left, look to your right. These are your, your people, um, and take a chance and talk to them. You, you might not kick off a conversation with them, but the reality is you might. And from there, you might end up in a half dozen other conversations. And it is the three days out of the year where you're going to have an opportunity to do that. Um, and don't miss out on that chance. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I want to add my own 
tip, which I'm also sharing on behalf of DEF CON, do not fuck with the hotel or the casinos. I'm yeah. being serious. Yeah. Yep. It is very difficult to find a venue that will put up with our shenanigans. Please don't make it harder for us to ho host DEF CON in future years. Okay? Do not fuck with our hotels or the casinos that have opened their doors to let our community come mm. in and be together. So that's, that's my tip. <laughs> um, so one of the things, and Jeff touched on this a bit as well, um, but one of the things that I think is so important uh, and is different about DEF CON compared to, you know, what we might consider to be a professional infosec conference. Um, there's an example down the road. Um, is that DEF CON isn't just a transaction of, hey, we went to this conference and did this thing, but DEF CON really is a community above and beyond what is going to happen over the next three days this week. Um, and so I want to ask um, our panelists here to talk a little bit about what did you do to engage in the community outside of, you know, the three days that we have together every year? Um, what is some advice that you would share with everybody in terms of how to, how to make DEF CON more than just a transactional event? <laughs> I don't think oh, her I mic's think her on. Mic. Is her mic on? Yeah, her mic. All right, can we have hey, somebody hey. else while we try to? No. All right. Hey. Oh, can you look it back? Is it on now? Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Um, that's a really good question. Thanks for making me first. Um, <laughs> 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 connecting with people. Um, join organization, um, for me personally, I'll speak from my experience. I joined Black Girls Hack. Um, I'm the director of policy over there. Um, it was easy for me to connect and grow, even though we all live across the country with the people in the cyberspace. Um, and that develops relationships where some of these people are not my friends. I can call on them. I have mentors. I have different people if something happens at work I can lean on. So for me it's continuous, continually um, uh, connecting and share with other people. The first year I came here to DEF CON was back in like 2009 and it was overwhelming and I'll be very transparent with you, I have crazy imposter syndrome. And being around so many smart people made me feel like I didn't know enough to be here. So when I came home from DEF CON and I started doing shows on YouTube, I decided to really delve into things and start educating myself. And the way that I tried to become a part of the community was by introducing tutorials on things that I was truly, really interested in, like, I, like Wireshark series and stuff like that. And by learning those things myself, and by delving in into it like a noob and like completely just telling people, hey, I'm a noob too, it's okay. Like it's okay to learn all these things and educate yourself, like that's totally fine. I learned coming back the next year that everybody else is more than happy to share their knowledge. And that was the biggest thing that I brought home from DEF CON after going a couple of years was that people are more than willing to, and more than happy to teach you new concepts, teach you new techniques about information security and privacy, uh, hacking in general. And there's so much more that you can learn when you're willing to get yourself out there and kind of combat your own imposter syndrome and just tell people, hey, I don't know how this works. Can you tell me like I'm five years old? <laughs> and by doing that, I really, really felt like a part of this community and through the years, it's become stronger and stronger to the point where I came back this year after being gone for two years and I got ambushed by a few friends in the hallway and I started bawling my eyes out because I was so happy to see them. It truly it does turn into a family once you find your people here and I think it really just takes getting out of your shell and just being willing to talk to people. Uh, for me, this is my second DEF CON. The first one I went to was like right before the pandemic. When the first one, I probably just knew people on my team or that I'd worked with directly before. Since then, the way that I probably had the most interaction with 
people in this community is like at my local conferences or just other conferences that I travel to because I imagine you guys probably go to other conferences there. And then, oh, also people that uh, have funny memes on Twitter. That is, um, <laughs> that, that's my tribe. And um, yeah, and so now when I come back around here, like I might bump into people or like maybe just through Twitter and say, hey, are you gonna be around? And then just catching up with people that way. Uh, and that's helped me a lot. And I feel like I know a lot more people now. Um, yeah. yeah, so for me, um, when I started coming to DEF CON, um, I was actually the station manager for the world's largest online punk rock station um, and I had bought a computer a year before that and I was like, ah, computers, got that. <laughs> um, and so I showed up at DEF CON and I totally rocked the imposter syndrome. Uh, sat down at a table and had my head completely blown um, to the point where it was a little panicky too because you're like, oh shit, I'm way out of my element. Um, after that, uh, you know, I attempted to try to get a press pass and was roadblocked year after year. Um, so I eventually not, not found another me. methodology. Not by me. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, not by me. Um, but yeah, I found a different, different way of doing it. Um, I uh, made friends and started talking with those people and handed out uh, cheesy business cards. And um, an unfortunate event happened, um, and they needed somebody to step in and help out with DCTV. And I was sitting at the Alexis Park, and my two coworkers walked past me, and I'm like, "What are you? What are you guys doing here?" And they're like, "Oh, um, somebody reached out to us and asked us to set up DCTV." And I was like, "Seriously, I hand with the business cards, and they get the goon badge." <laughs> so um, I made a stink and uh, invited myself into their team and next thing you know I was hanging APs and you know the rest is kind of a history. For me at home, um, I no longer live in a large city. Uh, I live in a small town. I live in a small town that has been transitioning from being a mill town or an industrial town into being a new uh, or trying to reinvent itself. Um, this small town, they don't they don't embrace technology. Um, it is uh, very hands-off for them. Um, but I'm opening a makerspace and I'm getting the community to try to learn about the maker community. And from there, start to bridge that gap and start to introduce technology and start to do, introduce you know, a new mindset to them. So that's, that's the part I try to give back to the community. Awesome, I loved all those ideas and I love all your stories. Um, the other thing that, that I will add is that if you aren't really sure where to start and you haven't quite found um, your, your group of folks yet, there is an organization called the Lonely Hacker Club. So if you want to look them up and connect with them, um, they do a really good job of helping people, um, like matching them with folks who share interests and helping you locate um, certain corners within DEF CON and within the community uh, where you can meet new folks. So that's a good resource uh, if you're looking for, for some additional support. Um, so that being said, I want to give folks time to ask questions um, so you can pick the brains of these really smart people up here. Um, we do have uh, roaming mics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask, just raise your hand and um, the goons will be uh, bringing the mic to you. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to say this to start off with. Um, my expertise is in administrative and uh, operational. So if you're going to ask me a question about the knock and where the pixies go, um, I'll do my best, but most likely I'll just give you my Twitter handle and I will get you an answer later. <laughs> I see a hand back there. Raise your hand really high so we can I see can, if you have a question. There. We can get a mic to you. Where are the mics? Oh, make him run. I see Mike. Make him run. I see a Mike person running. There, there he is. you go. Run, run, sir, run. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Oh, wow. Hello. I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you asking everyone not to fuck with the casinos and the hotels. How about each other? The uh, <laughs> reputation is that, you know, you enter a DEF CON Wi Fi and it's toxic. And why is that okay if that's true? And if it's not true, please dispel. I just want to make sure I understood the question. So tell me if I'm getting this wrong. 
Uh, the question is, why is there not a rule about not fucking with each other in terms of the Wi-Fi network and everyone's connected devices? Did I get it? Okay. It's a very good question. Um, and I don't have a 100% definitive answer for you, but I'm gonna tell you the way that we're thinking about it. Um, is this is a hacker conference. We expect people to hack on things. We're also very mindful of the fact that members of our community fall along a very long moral spectrum in terms of what is considered ethical hacking and what is um, kind of everybody's comfort and boundary with that. Uh, and we, we have to be realistic about that um, because we, we have anonymous attendance. I don't actually know who is in this room. That's on purpose, right? We don't want governments and other agencies to be able to come and get it, you know, an attendee list from us. So there is a little bit, I think, of um, self-awareness of what kind of environment we're in from a security perspective while we're here. Uh, and so we do try to provide advice on how to protect yourself, how to protect your networks. We, you know, advise you don't bring your corporate devices here. Um, but at the same time, I want to also acknowledge the fact that in 2022, if you don't feel safe, um, you know, using technology within the DEF CON space, I think we also need to be talking about how safe our normal everyday networks are, yeah. right? So there's a lot of advice about, you know, don't, you, uh, don't bring smartphones, don't use Wi-Fi, don't use all of this, you know, when you come to, to DEF CON and people are putting all their devices in Faraday's. If you are a high risk, high target individual where you know nation states are targeting you, mm -hmm. I think that's all applicable device or ad advice. But for most of us, the types of things that I do to protect myself when I'm at DEF CON are the things I do every single day because those threats exist even when the hackers go home, right? So I don't know if that's a satisfactory answer for you, um, but that's at least the way that we've been thinking about it. Uh, in terms of DEF CON. We hope that everybody is respectful of each other, but this is also a hacker conference and we want people to be able to learn um, and develop new skills and to be able to find vulnerabilities so that they can ultimately be fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can't enforce that that's what people do with the knowledge that they gain. Um, I don't know if I could add a little bit extra. Sure. It Mel, Mel is 100% correct. Um, and, but we do offer uh, so we have, you know, DEF CON open. Um, it is the Wild West and a great experience if you have not tried it yet. Um, and then we have DEF CON, which you was formerly known as DEF CON Secure, right? You know. um, and there's tons of information available at uh, wifireg.defcon.org. Um, and I definitely recommend uh, you visit there. Um, and then, the, you know, the, the question about the casino floor. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, part of my French, but don't shit in the pool. Um, it is, it is. Uh, it, they don't, they don't mess around, right? That's crime. It is, a, it is a crime to uh, attack a, a a company, a person, anything, right? And they don't look at it as you being um, experimenting, or there is no like three day free pass uh, in Las Vegas. <laughs> You step out of line and they will respond with their full force and they brought extra force for this weekend. So yeah, yeah like just, just we, you got a sandbox. Go build castles, tear down castles, <laughs> do it in this environment. Everybody's gonna leave happy, so. You are the best bad cop to my good cop. Thank you for adding that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? Yep. Hey, yeah, so. Most conferences I go to, I leave with, you know, a bag full of stuff. Come here, everyone tells me I'm at the wrong place, so I'm just wondering, is there a place to get free swag anywhere here? Yes. Yeah. Snub should take that one. Oh my gosh. Go to the sticker swap. You can get so many stickers. <laughs> I have a friend who literally throws little rubber ducks at people over and over again. I had a friend last night that gave me a little action figure for his company. Like there, you can find stuff all over the place. People are handing out swag. Did you introduce me to your friend? Because I, I like action <laughs> figures. I mean like 
Oh, the Kintaro. Okay, cool. You can go find him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, full, uh, full disclosure, I am volunteering at the Hack5 booth, but straight up, like, with a purchase, we're giving out free battery packs. Like, you can find stuff all over the place, so, yeah, definitely. Go to the sticker swap. I'm going to be there. I'll give you some stickers. <laughs> we're having a networking event tonight. If you come to our networking event, you will have swag bags from you, so. Yeah. Oh, damn. I know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Is that at the Girls Hack yeah. Village? Girls Hack Village All and right. the Caesar in the Flamingo, Virginia City Three. Sorry, it's very long. <laughs> so you guys come there. We're also having a '90s party tomorrow. Ooh, here in the Caesar's Forum. So I'm there, <laughs> everyone is welcome. <laughs> so we'll have swag. So just come visit us. Just small little promo. <laughs> Awesome. But the reason you won't get a DEF CON swag bag when you register is, as Jeff mentioned, we don't have corporate sponsors. And so that swag is either going to come from um, the vendors who are sponsoring individual villages um, or from attendees who are being very generous and sharing things uh, with the community. I think one thing to note that I think a lot of first time attendees may not know is that DEF CON operates a little bit like a platform where we provide the space um, for people to create villages, but the villages run their own content and programming, uh, which means that they may have sponsors, but that sponsor only sponsors that room and their relationship is with the village, not with DEF CON. So you may find this, uh, you may find swag at different parts of conference uh, and parts of DEF CON, but we don't have just one single DEF CON swag bag because DEF CON does not accept corporate sponsors. Yeah, don't clap that. That is good. That's that's a good thing. <laughs> Great explanation. All right, I think sorry. we had a question over here. Sorry if I stutter, uh, but how would someone go about getting into hacking? This is coming from like knowledge on basic networking and stuff. But how would some teenager or hell even adult go into like hacking at all? You got a makerspace in your community? Sorry, I'm like shameless plug for makerspaces. But yeah, you got a makerspace in your community. You got a Hackerspace, you got, uh, you know, that's a great place to start because you're going to get direct feedback from people and people will engage with you. There are also local um, DEF CON groups yeah, in sorry. a lot of groups. cities all over the world. So I, that would be my first place where I would start was I, I would, you know, look up online whether or not there was a DEF CON group in my city. Um, if, if not, then I would look at a hacker space. There are a lot of even just hacker um, collectives that exist in a lot of cities. Um, so at least from my experience, having somebody in my town that I can meet with, you know, in meet space is, is where I would start and what I would recommend. Um, but even for kids, there's a lot of free resources online. Um, just be really, again, as um, Sparky was saying earlier, be really careful about um, the environments that we're teaching people in because we, we don't want to see kids accidentally end up in legal trouble because they unknowingly crossed a line. So look for those resources online that are, you know, giving you a safe environment rather than having the kids just hack all over the internet. Because um, we, we need those skills, we need that talent, we, we don't want to lose them, you know, to the, to the legal process. There's one back there. Wait I think the goon has a question. <laughs> After this one, we have time for one more. So the one in the back will be the last one. Uh, hi, yes. So mainly I'm a back-end software engineer. I mainly write APIs in Go. So I'm not exactly a hacker, but what would be a suggestion that you give to me to uh, gain some expertise from the great people here so that what it is I write is not riddled with uh, vulnerabilities? Any particular uh, places I should go? I just want to note that we found the unicorn, a developer who doesn't want to write insecure code. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Any advice from our panelists? There's definitely probably some interesting stuff for you in Blue Team Village. Uh, I don't know what space you work in. There's also uh, the Cloud Village as well, which could have some interesting uh, stuff for you. I'll be speaking at the Blue Team Village this afternoon, so come. <laughs> um, and we have different things going on in our village as well too, so you can come there as well. We are welcome. <laughs> the, the other place I'll recommend is the AppSec Village. So they do a lot of stuff around pen testing, software quality, 
um, testing and, and all of that. So that's another good place to, to meet um, other software developers who care about security. I'm, I'm probably definitely plus one the AppSec Village. Yeah. And yeah. you're already like two thirds of the way there. I mean, the fact that you will stand up publicly and say that you do not want to write insecure code is, is the right step forward. Um, I can't tell you how many dev meetings I'm in where they're like, ah, we'll take care of it afterwards. All right, last one in the back. Yes, uh, I'm here attending the conference with my wife. My wife uh, is not here for DEF CON though. Uh, I only have the pass for me. Are there any events or meetups or anything of that nature where we can attend together? That is a good question that I truthfully don't know the answer to. Um, but if you will come find me after this, and we can exchange contact info so I can find out and I'll let you know and I'll also have the um, DEF CON Twitter handle tweet out whatever I find out. So if other folks are interested in that information, watch the, the DEF CON Twitter handle and we'll, we'll get that out. But that is a great question. Thank you for asking that. That actually brings up a great message that I would love to share. Um, one year I brought my husband, I got him a badge and he loved it and he's, he's in HR. Like he's not, he's not a hacker, <laughs> but he loved it. He went in the lock picking village and he sat down for like an hour and he came out and he was just like, I know how to pick locks. And I was so proud of him. I was so proud. And then I was like, don't tell your boss because you're HR. You probably shouldn't know how to do that. But <laughs> like bring, bring people who are not hackers to the convention and share the wealth of knowledge because oftentimes you can find a village that they will absolutely love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I've, I've, I brought my wife once to, to DEF CON and nine months later um, my son was born. So um, <laughs> there are other events. Congratulations. Um, we aptly named him Flynn too. So um, yeah. What village was that? <laughs> it's invite only. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, there's, t there's tons of stuff to do uh, with your significant other. And, and that's the beauty of it. Like, we are a community, as Jeff said earlier, of artists and lock pickers and phone freaks. And, like, there's just so many different things. Like, yeah, like, there's, there's always something to find. Um, and if you're really, really having a hard time, just go see a fantastic singer. Mm -hmm. Right? There you go, right? Go see a fantastic performer. Here. Yeah, yeah. So, are you saying DevCom changes lives? Oh, damn! Does yes. it? Yes. Like <laughs> I didn't lie. Oh. Okay, changed your life. I haven't brought him. Uh, I, I am hoping for Roots, uh, or sorry, the the new version of it. Yeah. Uh, and I I, 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 I personally believe that <clears throat> DevCon may uh, have to sponsor my child uh, <laughs> to attend, uh, as a so, you know concerns there, so. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. How about a round of applause for our panelists? <laughs> so thank you so much, everybody, for starting your DEF CON 30 with us here today. And welcome to DEF CON. <laughs> welcome to DEF CON. Hack the planet.